so you may be asking yourself why I'm starting this video off showing you little sea creatures. Well, that's because today I'm going to start part one of a new coral reef piece that's going to hang above my brand new saltwater aquarium that I'm also filming and going to be showing you over the next few months. If you love this video and want to see more, don't forget to subscribe, click the bell, like, and leave a comment. Hello, my friend. Welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to show you step one in a brand new painting I'm making for my brand new aquarium reef that I'm trying to build. And I want to bring you along for the journey on all of it. So I will be releasing little clips of my journey with the new reef tank and as always bringing you these educational videos. So today I'm working with paints that are mixed with one part acrylic paint, two parts American Floetrol and water to thin it down to the correct consistency that I need for the specific technique that I'm doing today. Now if you need help with consistency, I have a great video that is linked in the description of this video, so check that out. In that video, you will find a free printable chart that you can print out at home and follow along with the steps of that video to figure out what the different consistencies are for all of the different acrylic pour techniques. So I'm going to let you know that I had a really tough time with this first part here. I wanted to create a blowout that looked like a piece of coral, not necessarily what a Dutch pour would look like, like the composition of a Dutch pour, but just a piece of coral. The issue came in with the gray base paint that I used. The brand was Grumbacher. It was an old tube of paint. I used it because it looked fine, but you're going to notice here when I blow out all of these beautiful, vibrant colors that there's a huge issue that happens. I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself though. First, let me explain the colors I'm putting down on top of this Grumbacher paint are all Amsterdam brand paints and they worked fine. So once I laid down all my colors, I torched for bubbles and then I came in with the dryer and started to blow it out. Now I was incredibly happy with the outcome of the composition. However, something happened and you're going to see that next. I carefully took my time blowing the paint in the pattern or I should say in the direction that I wanted it to go. I was looking just for almost like a branch look, like a piece of coral, not a whole bushel of it. I just wanted a simple looking branch of beautiful pink flowing over the canvas with a little bit of a, a darker area in the center that I could move on to when it dried and use the prismatic pour technique to create some really beautiful uh, we'll say bubble algae looking areas. I wanted it to look like something was growing on this piece of coral just to give it a little mixed media look and have it stand out a little bit from the rest of the painting. So as you can see, this blew out beautifully. I was so happy with it. Look at how vibrant that is. And then five minutes later, this is what I had. The paint the base paint specifically ate up all of my color. And how do I know it was that base paint? Because when I swiped away this paint and then took some white and black Amsterdam brand paints to create a gray color to do another base coat, once I poured it down, which you're going to see in a minute, this first layer of gray paint, which was bad, left some kind of residue on the canvas. And you can see in the new layer 
these little dark spots that are popping up. So that's what told me that that first paint was no good. Can you see me popping them there? I thought they were actually like some kind of a colorant, but it wasn't. It was some kind of a grease that was in that paint. And I don't even know how that happened. The only thing I could think of is that it was an old tube and it, it just went bad somehow. I'm not sure because when I squeezed it out of the tube, it looked like it was just acrylic paint. It didn't look separated or anything like that, but it was really, really weird. But anyway, I put down the color again and I started to blow out the pattern again. It did still happen a little bit, but I was able to just let it dry and work with what I had. But anyway, again, it wasn't these Amsterdam paints. It was some kind of residue left from that first layer. And um, hey, these things happen. So if you ever have something like that happen to you, you know that it may not necessarily be your fault. Moving on though. So I continued to blow out my colors again and I wasn't really happy with the composition this time, but I said to myself, Tammy, leave it alone because you're going to do a lot more work to this painting over the next few weeks and uh, we'll work with it. So this is just me blowing out the composition. And then once I'm done with this part, I'm going to let it dry and uh, we're going to move on to the next step. But you can see there in those uh, areas where there's no color, it was still happening a little bit, but not as bad as the first time. So anyhow, I'm done now. We're going to let this dry and I'm going to come back in here now a week later. And this is what we got. It dried beautifully, and now I'm going to take some Dawn dish soap that's been agitated with tap water and use the foam to fill in all of these darker areas in the piece of coral with the prismatic technique. So this technique is known in the resin world as dragon scales. However, in the acrylic pouring world, we really don't use it, so I'm giving it a new name for, for us. You take some UV resin, not regular resin, just UV resin. And by the way, I have a link for a kit that comes with not only the big bottle of resin, but also the UV light that you need to cure it. That, along with the chameleon pigments that I use, are in the description of this video. So now I just take a brush and spread it out over the area where I want to create that texture. Now, I want to bring up something about the brush because a few people have told me this or suggested that I use a silicone brush. Here's the thing. I get these four for a dollar at the Dollar Tree, and those silicone brushes, they the shape of them, they're very hard to work with in really tight areas. So that's why I like to spread it out with a paintbrush. I can control more where the resin goes. I have tried those silicone brushes and I just don't like them. So I get these brushes for, for a dollar 25 and I just, you know, toss them when I'm done using them. But anyway, once you have your UV resin spread out where you want it, Go to your bowl of foam that you created with the Dawn dish soap and scoop some of that foam off of the top and put it on top of the wet resin. Be very gentle with it. You don't want to move it around too much. And if you need to spread it out to cover an area like I'm doing right now, gently do that from the upper part of the foam. Don't go and move the whole puddle. Just kind of gently spread it out. Once you have that, you put your light on for 60 seconds, let it cure, and then when 60 seconds has passed, remove the light, scoop off the foam, and return it to your bowl because you can reuse it, and then take a paper towel and gently pat it dry. You don't want to be too rough because the texture of the bubbles that were left behind will rip up the paper towel and it'll get stuck in there. So just gently tap it off and then 
you're left with this amazingly gorgeous texture on your canvas. This texture is going to fit in perfectly with the theme of my painting. So here I'll show you one more time how to do this. I'm not going to bore you showing all of the areas on the canvas that I do this because it's all very repetitive. Take the UV resin, spread it out over the area that you want to create the texture. You don't need to use a lot of it. It just needs to be wet in that area, meaning you don't need it to be like really, really thick. Just make that area wet with the UV resin. Gently place the foam on top. Again, if you need to spread it out to make it cover more surface, do so from the top of the foam puddle, not move the entire thing or, you know, spread it out like frosting. Go very gently from the top, as you see me doing here. Place the light over it for 60 seconds. Of course, this is time lapse, so 60 seconds goes by quick. And then remove the light, remove the foam. Put the foam back into your bowl to reuse it and then lightly pat it off to dry it. And then you'll see your beautiful texture. So now I'm going to off screen do that same exact technique to all of these darker areas. And then when I'm done, this is what you will see that beautiful texture everywhere. I wanted it to be. So now the next step is, is to take some pigments and color in that texture to make it even more special. So I'm using here some Let's Resin Chameleon Powders, and I'm going to take just a tiny bit on the end of a dry brush and just buff it over the surface of that texture. And what's going to happen is that fine powder is going to cling to that texture. It won't cling to the canvas itself where that texture is not because there's nothing for it to grab onto. But where I created this texture, it will cling to that and stay on there. Now, a lot of people have been asking how I finish these paintings. Me personally, I use matte uh, spray varnish, not the brush type, because if you use a brush, it will naturally take some of that pigment and brush it onto the surface of your canvas where you don't want it. I just use a matte spray varnish and I like the look that that provides. It just, just leaves it looking as it looks right now. If you use a gloss varnish, it's going to make it look more shinier. I prefer this look, just the natural look. So matte varnish for me. You can use resin if you want. Again, I personally don't like resin on this type of painting, and I love resin. Don't get me wrong, but uh, I just think it looks nice the way that it is. However, I am going to be working on this painting over the next few weeks. So once I add my fish and other things into it, it may come to where I will want to add resin. I don't know yet. If it was just adding this texture, though, I would not. So here it is, my friends. I want you to look at how beautiful these chameleon pigments are. You look at it this way, and it's a shimmery black cherry color. And in a minute, I'm going to show you when I move to a different direction. It actually looks like it's bronze. It's a really cool looking effect. So this is looking at it head on. This is looking at it from the other direction. Do you see how it changed color? It's just so incredibly beautiful. And these chameleon pigments, you can get them on Amazon. They're like a, a six pack for 18 bucks. They're pretty cheap. And uh, yeah, they, they just are amazing. Very amazing. You know me and my love of glitter and shimmer and everything. And they're a lot of fun. So here it is in the dark. I wanted to show you how it looks like a bunch of little diamonds that are sparkling on your painting. It almost reminds me of like back in the day when people would bedazzle things with that, the little gemstones. They would put them all over their jean jackets or wherever. 
It's like you have a bunch of crystals that you glued to your canvas to create this texture. And there are a few parts that I'm not happy with, and that's mainly the blowout of the petal on the end there. But I'm going to take that and I'm going to work on that over the next few weeks. Maybe put some fish in here. Uh, we'll see, horse. We'll see. Something will be happening with this painting. But as I said, I'm going to take my time with this. And as I work on my fish tank, I will work on this. And one day you'll be seeing the final result of it. This is kind of the pre-final result, but... I wanted to show you this technique and how you can add it to your Dutch pours and or all of your acrylic pours. And as a matter of fact, I have another painting that I just did this to that I want to show you. This may also become one for my fish tank area. So this was a Dutch pour I had blown out where I just added a little bit of that texture into the petals. And uh, it's so just it's unique i don't know what else to say about it let me show you it in the dark so you can really see it because right now on camera it's just not doing what it needs to do for me unless you have filmed you don't know how hard it is to film a painting <laughs> i swear <laughs> Rome was built easier than it is to film these paintings. <laughs> but here you can see it a little bit here. Now it's just they're little twinkling, sparkling, diamond looking spots in the painting. And I just really love the technique. I don't know how many more times I'm going to say that, but it's true. I just love unique things. And this is a unique thing. So I want to thank you for joining me today. Before you leave, though, I have a few products from my other obsession, which is soap making, that I am releasing. They are called Foaming Bath Sugar Scrubs. They not only cleanse, but they also exfoliate and leave you feeling silky smooth. Now, I got three scents left, which are Caramel Frappuccino, Mermaid Tears, and Unicorn Tears, which I'll show you in a second here again. Now, for the Unicorn Tears, I have three different sizes, four, six, and eight ounces. For the others, however, I only have eight ounce jars left. And they are super thick. They come with a little tiny soap in bed in the center. Well, the Unicorn and the Mermaid do, the ca caramel frappuccino does not. That just has a couple of coffee beans for a uh, cute little look on top. But they're just really, really good for your skin. Made with cocum butter, which has antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, regenerative properties. It's like a really, really good butter for your skin. Avocado oil, sunflower oil. Just really good stuff. One of my best selling products. And again, I've just finally started releasing them. So if you're interested in either of these three scents or any of the soaps that I have left that I'll show you right now, you can send me an email at artbytammy at yahoo.com. But first, look in the description of this video. All the pricing is there. What I need you to send me, such as your address, so I can quote you on shipping. And just so you know, I'm running a sale on the Snowman Balls soap because it's now out of season. So if you're interested in that bar, you can get it at a cheaper price. So check out the description for all of the information. And as always, my friends, I love you all. I hope nothing but the best for you. And here's a little clip, by the way, of how my reef tank is coming along. Step one of my new reef tank. I took a bunch of reef rock and glued it together to create this piece. There's a bunch of caves, swim throughs, and hiding places for the fish and little sea creatures that are going to be crawling around in there. I created a lot of little ledges for corals and anemones. The next step was to add some sand. So I added in some Carib Sea live sand. 
that lighter patch of sand, by the way, is just a reflection from the window. But anyways, we added in the sand and then I had my son, who is very strong, lift up the five gallons of water and start pouring them in. And this is as far as I've gotten. I have to wait another week or so to add a fish. And that will be the next step that you will be seeing. Eventually, you will be seeing me add also some new corals. And I think it'll be fun to document this with you. Hey, this is technically another form of fluid art, is it not? <laughs> I love you all. I want to thank you so very much for joining me. Make sure you tune in next Sunday to see what I come up with next. And I promise I will document my coral painting as well. I love you all and happy pouring.